Considered as one of the best stacks out there, the Mnemonica stack was created by Juan Tom Ruiz, who is regarded as one of the world's best close-up magicians ever. The Mnemonica stack is a particular sequence of cards that's memorized by a magician or performer. So each card has a number associated with it between one and 52. The great thing about this is that you can tell which card is in which position and vice versa. However, it does take a lot more work and effort to memorize the Mnemonica stack versus a more cyclic type size seven stack. So why did he create this stack? Let me give you a couple of reasons. One of course was to create a stack that's able to pull off absolute miracles with a seemingly shuffled deck of cards. Two was to create an undetectable stack. So there is no way any layman can tell that this deck is organized because there really are no patterns. And three, which is just the icing on the cake is that this stack can be derived from brand new deck order right in front of the spectator during a performance. Now that I shared some background with you, let's actually talk about the setup of the stack. By the way, the full stack order will be in the description so you can visually see what that is. There is a method that Juan Tomaris covered in his book that he considered an easy way to set up the stack, starting with playing cards that are in brand new deck order according to the United States Playing Card Company standards. One thing that I do have to note, the method I'm showing you right now is the one that you'll be using to set up the stack for yourself. This is not, keyword, not the method that you would use when setting up the stack in front of an audience. If you wanna learn more on that, I'd highly recommend you to pick up Juan Tamariz's book, Mnemonica. Now that that's covered, let's actually get into the setup. So I have a brand new deck of cards here. Let me get rid of the jokers and let me get rid of the add cards. So we have the spades, ace through king ascending, then the diamonds, ace through king ascending, then the clubs, um, king through ace descending, and the hearts, king through ace descending. First thing you do now is keep the spades as they are. You're gonna reverse the order of the diamonds and the hearts. So let's reverse the order here. Okay, once you've reversed the order of the diamonds and the hearts, take up the spades. Right behind the spades, you're gonna put the uh, hearts. Right behind the hearts, you're going to put the uh, diamonds. And right behind the diamonds, you're going to put the clubs. So it should look something like this. Spades, ace through king, ascending, hearts, ace through king, ascending, diamonds, king through ace, descending, and the clubs, king through ace, descending. The next step, pretty easy. All you gotta do is a quadruple anti-feral. I know, I read that for the first time and I'm like, what? What do you mean? I don't know what that is. But in short, all you're really doing is dealing the cards into 16 piles in a four by four square and then picking them up in a uh, particular fashion. So let's go through that and let me show you exactly how it's done. Now that we have all these piles, the first column we're gonna pick up from is this right column here, okay? And uh, the way that we're gonna label this column is one, two, three, four. And that's the beginning of each pile that we'll make. So for example, we'll take pile number one here as we labeled it. We're gonna pick up diagonally like this. We pick up one, go down this diagonal here, pick up this one, pick up this one. Once the diagonal ends, we return back to the uh, top left-hand corner and there we go, we have made our first pile. From here, we go down. So we go to row number two, pick up this pile, go down diagonally, pick up this pile. We see the diagonal ends here, but it continues here, okay? So we pick this up, boom, right here. And then just like this right here. Once we have all these, put them right on top of the first pile. And now we've done one, two, we go to three. So we pick up this pile. We go continue down this diagonal. Boom, pick this up, if I can pick it up. Pick this up and pick this one up. Once all these are picked up, put that on top. And now this is pile number four. We just pick this up diagonally. Boom, boom, boom. If I can pick it up, come on, there we go. Boom and boom. We picked all this up, put that all together into one deck. From here, you have to cut between the two black nines. So go ahead, search for the nines. There we have the nine of clubs and the nine of spades. So you wanna cut between those two black nines like this with the deck face down, right? So we have nine of clubs here, nine of spades on top of the other pile. And we deal off eight cards from the top pile to the bottom pile, single, one card at a time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we put this right back on top. 
Next thing you'll do is turn this deck over and cut between the two of hearts and three of clubs. So there you go, cut right between them. Take the smaller pile, put it on the table face down. And now you'll do the Klondike shuffle of the upper portion or the larger pile onto the smaller pile. And all that means is you take the top and bottom card of uh, this pile that you're holding, put it on top of the smaller pile like this. This is all you're doing. So let's just go through the entire deck like this. And there we go, we're done. One final step, look for the uh, four of clubs. If we can find the four of clubs, four of clubs, nine of diamonds, whatever it is. There we go, and split at that point. Bring everything, boom, the small pile, you have the small pile up on top. Bring that right to the front. And here you have set up your Mnemonica stack in the correct order. I know it seemed like a lot of effort just to set up the uh, Mnemonica stack, but I guarantee you it's much faster than finding every single card and arranging it in that particular order. I think it's really cool how it uh, works out this way. So I would definitely recommend using this method. And it may seem confusing, it may seem like it takes a long time, but I guarantee you, if you do this two to three times, you'll have this mastered and uh, this deck set up in no time. There are an incredible amount of advantages for using the stack as Swan Tomeri's covered in his book. Obviously, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but here are a couple. The Mnemonica stack can be created very quickly in front of a spectator using a deck that's in new deck order. Once the stack is memorized, you instantly know where each card is. Oh, you wanna know the 10th card? Two of spades. Many great spelling effects, amazing demonstrations at the card table with poker, blackjack, rummy, you name it, the advantages are just too many to list. And now, as I mentioned earlier, the only difficult thing about this is memorizing the order of the stack. I'm not gonna cover how to memorize the stack order in this video because we each learn in our own ways and it would take some time. However, I would recommend memorizing the stack order in the method in which you learn best. In his book, Tamaris also talked about ways to memorize the stack order. You can go with auditory learning, for example, reciting the cards the same way you would recite a, a very familiar song, or you can go with a visual type learning where you're looking at the card and associating a number with that card, drawing it out in some way in your mind, or you can use a mnemonic device like uh, tell yourself a story where the cards are all involved. There are just countless ways to learn this stack. And if you did learn it, do let me know down in the comments what method you used. I truly believe this is among the best, if not the best stack out there. And it's definitely worth putting your time and energy into learning. And I know you may be thinking, oh, it's just another stack. The spectator will shuffle the deck anyway. Trust me, trust me, trust me. All right, guys, so I hope this gave you a nice high-level insight on the Mnemonica stack. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.